Welcome back to another video. My name is Will and in this one we're going to talk about the OBS software for Windows. It's a screen recording software. It's totally free. It's super easy to use, but I'll teach you my own custom settings that I use to record the screens for our tutorials. And if you're video editing, if you ever need to screen capture something to throw it into your edits, this is how you do it. Okay, so I have OBS open here and you're seeing this weird trippy view because I'm recording a screen capture of a screen capture. But anyway, this is the preview window. And then down here, in order to get the preview window, you wanna make sure that you create a monitor capture. To do that, you just right click and go to add and then go to display capture. And then I've just changed the name of it to monitor capture. And if I go to right click properties, you'll see that I've set it to my display and I am capturing the cursor, which I find helpful for doing tutorials. You can turn that off if you want though. And then secondly, I'm recording with a microphone attached to an audio device. And similarly, I right clicked, went to add and then audio input capture that created this. And if we do the same thing, right click, go to properties. You'll see that here is my Focusrite USB audio device. So that's my interface to record the audio. And then on the right, if I wasn't recording, it would say start recording. So you'd press that button to start and then you could press stop recording to stop it. It'll then automatically save the file into a folder that you set in the settings. So let's go to settings. And on the settings tab, I've made several adjustments and you can copy the settings I have or do a mix and match so that you have your own custom settings. So at the top here, I don't automatically check for updates because I prefer to update manually when I want to update. The rule for me is if it's not broken, don't fix it. And then I believe all the other settings are set to default on this page. We'll skip the stream because we're not streaming. Under the output settings, we'll go to recording. So my recording path is set to my internal drive into a folder called uh, screen captures. And for my recording format, I can't change that now because I am recording. However, I've set it to MKV. There are several other options, but I would recommend recording in MKV. I've done a lot of research on this and my own tests. MKV is your best option because with MKV, if the program crashes, it'll still save the file up to that point. Whereas if you set it to one of the other options like MP4, if it does crash, you're going to lose the file. It won't save it. On top of that, MKV and MP4 are the only two formats that I believe you can record multi-channel audio. So for me, I do record the desktop audio as well as my microphone. So I do need the two channels and that's why I choose the MKV option. Under the audio tracks, I have one and two selected. And then under the encoder, we're using the codec X264, which is H.264. And then for the rescale output, I leave that as unchecked. Then on the bottom settings, I have the rate control set to CBR, which is constant bitrate. You can change it to variable bitrate if you like, but I prefer it to be constant during the whole recording. And the constant bitrate for that that I've set is 8,000 kilobytes per second. I think that is a good bitrate for HD screen captures. You could go higher, but you might risk the chance of overloading the, uh, the screen capture software and then it might stop your recording. So I've found that 8000 doesn't really compromise quality, but it also is quick enough that it won't stop ever when you're recording. And then now we're done with this tab, let's go to audio. On this page, you can see that I've set the audio bitrate to 256 for all of them. And then let's go to the audio tab. Under here, the sample rate is 48 kilohertz and I record the stereo and I've left the desktop audio to default. That means it'll just record anything that the computer plays internally. Let's say you're watching a YouTube video or you're playing back any other video, listening to music, that's what the computer will record. And then I've set the other settings to disabled because I don't need them. And then the other settings are default. So let's go to the video tab. For here, I keep the base resolution 1920 by 1080 and the output resolution the same. So 1920 by 1080 again. And for the downscale filter, I leave it to bicubic. And then for the frames per second, I set it to 24. All right, let's go to hotkeys. I've removed all the hotkeys and I have start recording set to alt shift two. So you can set it to whatever you like. I find that easy to start and stop recordings. All right, so that is it on the advanced tab. I just left it all as default. And then back in this setting, click on the little gear at the bottom here and go to advanced audio properties. So this shows you our audio input and our desktop audio. Right now I have my input set to minus 4.4 and my desktop audio set to minus 0.9 just so it doesn't peak. I have my audio input to down mix to mono. And then for the tracks, I have it recording to one for the audio input. And then for the desktop audio, I have it set to three and four. So once you're done your recording, like I said, it'll automatically save once you hit stop and then it will save your MKV file. Now, in most cases, MKV is not the best option to edit with. So I prefer to do what's called remuxing. And to do that, you go to file and then remux recordings. 
and that'll open up the Remux recording panel. And under the three dots here for the OBS recording, if you click it, select one of the MKV files and then go to open, it'll bring it into the program. And then if you hit Remux, it'll do it almost instantly. It's very, very quick. And that'll turn the file into an MP4 file, but it'll also keep the MKV file in that folder. And then from there, you can keep your MKV file as a backup, but use your MP4 files for editing. So that's easy enough. That's how you screen record using the OBS software for Windows. Thanks for checking this video out. If you'd like to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.